give it up for our next headlight tour. Hello, good evening everyone. Wow, I can hear myself. <laughs> all right, good evening. Thank you all for joining me here. Now, before we dive right into the differences, let's do a little simple activity. Could you all raise your right hands up for me? Yes, lovely, thank you. Now, raise your left hands. Both, huh? I want both up. Thank you. Now do jazz hands. Yes, lovely, put them down. <laughs> so, now that I know you can raise your hands, raise your hand if you have ever felt confused or frustrated while using an application or a website. Okay, thank you. Now, raise your hand if you have felt extremely delighted or felt like you used an application or a website and it was like a breeze, you know. That has also happened, exactly. So now this is, um, these day-to-day -day moments are happening because of the involvement of something called user experience and customer experience. Now, imagine you study four years of design, you know, you go to your design institute, I think a lot of you are students, so four years of design where you're studying so much, you're going for your juries, developing your design thinking, learning how to apply all of this, and after the four year of uh, design course, you finally are working as a design professional. At this point is when you finally uh, are excited to apply all of your design learnings, only to realize that you have to unlearn some of the old patterns and learn so much more. And while you're, fine, you're, while you're thinking that your specialization was user experience, you realize that you've been actually doing so much more. So, I'm here today, Tanishka Bhadoria, a user experience designer, or so I thought. Why UX versus CX? Let me tell you a story. A couple of months ago, my millennial sister, who also happens to be a designer, thought it would be cool for her and I to present at the UX India conference together. You know, a sister dynamic duo at a conference. Sounds cool. When we started discussing the various topics or the various possibilities we could talk about, she helped me have a realization, or as I would like to put it, she slapped me in the face with the realization that I'm actually not a UX designer. In fact, I've been building customer experiences while using tools and uh, understanding from my UX knowledge. So this blurry line between UX and CX is what got me here. And obviously, this got me to a point where I asked myself a very philosophical question, that is, who am I? Let's dive a little deeper and understand this. So, what is user experience? It refers to how a user interacts or experiences a product, service, or a system. Let's take Instagram for an example. Almost all of us have social media, Instagram, Facebook, something or the other, right? When you open the app, it loads instantly. The navigation almost feels sleek. You know what to do, you know where to go, you know how you feel while you're using the app, right? Uh, at some point, the double tap interaction that Instagram has, the double tap to like, it was sort of revolutionary because everybody could just start adding it to their wish list and it became like a real thing. This is where we, uh, we realize how good UX comes into picture. And good UX is not something that's just built overnight. There are designers and researchers who are studying user behaviors and uh, running tests and iterating until the product feels just right. 
So if we were to Google right now, what is user experience design, you would get some of these top uh, definitions. So let's take a look. Um, UX design is a process where design teams create products that provide meaningful and relevant experiences to users. So yes, meaningful and relevant. It is easy and enjoyable for people to use. And my personal favorite would be by Nielsen and Norman, that it encompasses all aspects of an end user's interaction with the company's services and products. So at this point, I would like to take you back to the beginning of the session, where we were talking about the experiences you had. Would any of you like to share a digital experience with me that went horribly wrong? It could be e-commerce, uh, fashion, travel, anything. You were using a platform, didn't like it, something went wrong. Yes, please. Yes, you. <laughs> uh, I'll re, re uh, yeah. I was trying to book a flight on the Indigo website, and the there were two there were ads, there were the flight details, there were different flight options, and I while trying to book the flight because it was so confusing to figure out what to focus on and the information that I wanted to, I mistakenly booked the flight for a day before, then a week ahead, right? Because I couldn't figure out what they were trying to communicate to me, and I couldn't the the matrix was too small for me to figure out the details correctly. All right, so we have Indigo booking. Anybody else would like to add to that? Sure. Uh, so I recently got my driver's uh, license test taken. And uh, I am from Hyderabad. So I had a uh, different driver, uh, driver's license website. So it's, so it's uh, Telangana ka website. And we use that to have our driver's license done. And that was really confusing. And me, my father, we all tried to get the process right to book up a perfect detail and uh, reschedule the slot or something like that. And we had to pay an extra 500 rupees to an external third party to just get it done because we could not do it. And we are uh, well versed with like technology, but still we could not figure that out. Right. <laughs> OK, go ahead. This, uh, I'll just take one more. So this is a very funny one. I think uh, when the railways, you could book tickets online for Indian Rail, it would start asking you maths questions to see if you're a robot. And they were really complex. And you'd answer it, and they'd ask you another one. And I was wondering, what are they targeting? Who are they targeting? Is this like a maths, you know? I don't know if that's user experience, but yeah, that was a. Uh, that is, that is part of it, right? So uh, we have some grievances with government websites. I can clearly see that. And uh, that is also why you might see that a lot of Behance profiles end up having IRCTC as one of the redesigns applications or websites. Now, I have one which is my personal pet peeve, which is WhatsApp's delete for everyone feature. WhatsApp as a chat app was doing great, or is doing great, and it's amazing that you want to keep growing. But at some point, you decide that you sent an incorrect message to the wrong person, and then you have to sit and explain to them that, hey, I didn't mean to send that to you. But now there's this ethical dilemma that you either have to lie to them, or you have to just tell them to drop it. And they're not going to drop it. If they're, they're really good friends, they want to know what you sent them. Um, another such feature would be WhatsApp recently added the search, you know, meta AI uh, feature. And on that, they've taken away the chat experience, right? The purpose of uh, WhatsApp was to chat with people. Now I can search something that I was already doing using Google or any other AI platform for that matter, and the tags that are there aren't even relevant to me. Though it is sort of scary that they know I play chess. Uh, but those were my two cents. So we're going to dwell a little more deeper in the examples you all shared. So in my quest to understand the difference between UX and CX, because so far we're all just talking about digital platforms, I spoke to my mentor at work. 
and he gave me a pretty interesting answer. He said, I've been doing 20% UX and 80% CX. Wow, OK. What the hell is CX? So customer experience or C hello, hello, hello. Yeah, OK. Um, so customer experience or CX refers to when, sorry, my bad, is like a symphony of Customer experience is like a symphony of multiple components working together in harmony to create a beautiful experience. So that would be marketing, sales, customer support, product use, and follow-up. In this case, let's take Airbnb, for example. You're excited about your travel. You go to the app or a website. You pick a house that just seems exceptional. You make the booking. And the moment you do that, you get a warm welcome from the host. At this point, you're even more excited about your trip. You go there, the host responds to all your queries in, uh, in a much prompt uh, manner. The property is exceptional. It's, it's better than you even imagined, which is a lot of times rare. And even when you come back, you receive a feedback and a thank you note uh, from, the brand, from the brand with a discount for the next booking that you make. This is customer experience ensuring that you come back and uh, you have a positive experience while building your loyalty. So it is safe to say that customer experience, defining customer experience, it is basically the totality of interactions that a user has with an organization over time. So the time and every particular touch point that is involved in a journey become part of customer experience. Let's understand that a little more. So we, it is safe to say that all customers are users, but not all users are customers. When we say this, it means that a customer is defined by transaction. A user is simply someone who is using a service. So if we want to understand this a little better, we can go ahead and look at an e-commerce platform. So in this case, it's Amazon. You decide that you want to purchase a pair of headphones. Amazon has a great feature which will let you compare different headphones. Uh, you go on the application or the website. You choose the headphones that you like. You compare their features. You compare their prices. But at the end, you drop out because you decide you'd rather buy it after getting a feel of it in an actual store. So you go to maybe a Chroma or a Reliance Digital, and you purchase your headphones. At this point, for Amazon, it still matters how you navigate it through their platform. right? It matters to them that the navigation felt intuitive. It mattered to them that what they showed you was relevant to you. right? Now, in another universe, if you did not buy your headphones offline, and you ended up buying them on Amazon, they the fact that they had to deliver them in good condition, the fact that if something went wrong, customer support was also involved. This is all customer experience. Another way to add customer experience uh, would have been that even though you purchase the headphones offline, if something was wrong with them, you could always send them back. You know, Somebody could come pick them up. You could send them back, because that's how the customer support was built. So what it so what is the core difference? The core difference happens to be scope. UX is a metric. It's a, much, it's a specific part of a much broader picture. It is how a user interacts with a particular service. Whereas CX is the entire customer journey. It includes the pre-purchase and the post-purchase experiences. So if we take flights for an example, <laughs> Uh, this is where we're going to talk about the relationship together, right? Because we've been talking about UX. We've been talking about CX. What happens when they're brought together? Now, the lady in the front gave us an example of how her flight booking uh, did not go that well, right? She booked the incorrect date. In this case, OK, again, it's a bad UX as well. But let's take an example that you have to book a flight from Pune to Bangalore, right? You go on maybe kayak. Skyscanner, any of these uh, websites that we use for comparison. 
when you're on this website, you pick the flight that you like, you pick the date that you choose, and the price that is working for you. While you're booking, you realize that the moment you reach Bangalore, you're going to go to the office, which means you are going to be hungry because it's early in the morning and you don't want to be cranky the moment you reach the office. And voila, the, while booking your flight, you're given the option to book a meal. And with, along with a lot of other things that you can do, the meal is also at a 15% discount. Yay! And you get to pick whatever you want to eat. Once you've booked your flight tickets, you're happy, you're ready to go, and that's solved. Now, imagine living in Bangalore and going to the airport, which is two hours away. You reach the airport, and you get a notification while you're in the line to check in your luggage that your flight is cancelled. At this point, you're going to feel frustrated, you're going to feel annoyed. And uh, that is when, how do you... How does a brand deal with such a situation? The first thing they could do is, well, they should have informed you in advance if they got to know in advance. Next thing, reschedule your flight, right? Did help you reschedule your flight or give you some sort of goodies, a voucher. Maybe if it was a hopping flight and you ended up uh, getting st stranded at a midpoint and you can't go ahead, you can't go back. In that situation, they also end up giving you stay and they pay for a meal. This is all customer experience ensuring that you feel valued, seen, and heard, right? There's a problem, they have a solution for you. So this is where we uh, understand that great CX and a po uh, positive CX and great UX come together and yay, business. Business is great, right? Now, power of UX and CX together tells us that UX isn't just about the ease of use, it's also about anticipating the user's needs before they have even realized them, correct? While we're doing this, we're automatically ensuring that we have a customer for life because sometimes a bad UX can be pardoned, but bad CX is never forgotten. Now I'm pretty sure ma'am will never go on an Indigo uh, thing to book another flight, right? So. In this case, of course, that's a different situation. And she, you weren't able to reschedule your flight, were you? There you go. She made an error and she couldn't prevent it, nor could she go back and change it, which is a really bad thing. So what are we looking at in the future? Well, the lines between uh, UX and CX are getting blurrier by the day because more and more uh, experiences are getting digital. So in that case, we learn how to design just experiences. So it is safe to say that what was supposed to be a dynamic duo presenting to you together, I came here uh, as a user experience designer, but I learned that I'm Tanishka Bhadaurya, a creator and designer of experiences alike. So thank you. Hi, thank you. That was a great presentation. I have a question. So while you're I understand that UX, great UX leads to great CX. How do we communicate this to executives where they think that business goals are most important and design is just like window panels and <laughs> decoratives? So in such a situation, see, you can't just convince people, right? You need facts and you need proof. So a lot of times you do start on a project, but over a period of time, like maybe one or two deliverables did turn out to be good. When, you, when we talk about facts, it means you come up with research and you have to put in some extra effort because on one of my projects, I did have to do that. We had to convince the client that we need to, maybe something as simple as switching tools. Everything they had was on Sketch and Envision, their entire design system, and they wanted to continue using the tools. I know tools is not design, but Figma would have made their processes much faster. So in that case, we temporarily, the design team themselves, worked on a pitch where we showed them the capabilities of the difference between the two, right? So to convince the client as well, you have to put in that little effort. Once you win their trust is when then you can convince them that, hey, you know what? This is doable. And after that, they will also sort of agree to your uh, not exactly demands, but your suggestions. 
So that was a great presentation. Uh, I have a question related to this customer experience things because people have a set mindset that this is something to be taken care by R&D team or the marketing team, not the designer. Designer is specifically dealing with the task or the major UX part or the visual or the UI part. This is a set of expectation that a normal person would have. Today, I myself have encountered this word for the very first time. So like explaining this CX part as a UX designer, how can we do that? You already have teams in place, right? They're building the experiences and when you come into picture, you're uh, sort of, you might not directly communicate with the teams, but uh, your involvement is working on the UX part and then convincing the client or like letting the client know that, hey, we have these suggestions, we have these ideas. Like if you go back to the flight example, the 15% off is not a designer's decision. It could be a suggestion that, hey, if you say this, then more people would buy their meals online. They will not come to a plane and then say that, hey, I want that meal, and then you realize that it's not there. Right? So that's where you're, uh, you can suggest this. If it's a good idea, it can be implemented. Because again, there'll be a checking that, hey, uh, is, from sales side, is this possible? From the marketing point, uh, yeah, how do we advertise this, right? That's how all the teams holistically work together then. OK, so we can take just one more question. So any, any more questions? No? Thank you. Uh, so I, I'm still trying to form the question, so just bear with me, please. Uh, the last time you mentioned that many uh, digital experiences, uh, many experiences are becoming digital. Uh, but I don't get how that makes it blurry because it's still part of customer experience, right? Because let's say user experience designers are, they tend to create the, let's say, user, uh, the, the website or the app. And these emails or post purchase uh, emails or forms, these are still customer experience. So are you kind of suggesting that UX designers should get into that, or is it still two different positions? No, no. So I'm still saying they're two different things. But when I say the lines are getting blurry, is talking about the understanding. Because you can't have a good CX without having a good uh, UX. For example, if IRCTC was your example, uh, have you traveled in the Vande Bharat? I have, yeah. Yeah? Do you think it's better than the rest of the trains? I didn't travel in any other train, so I don't have a comparison. Oh, OK, all right. So it is the experience is much better. It might not be the best because we like love to complain. But uh, what the booking experience versus the train journey are two different things, right? In the train, you're getting a meal. You are getting sanitized seats, which is saying something, right? Train experiences. And uh, so that is a physical experience. Now, if you're going to talk, start comparing the various uh, experiences, we also have something called service experience. We also have something called business experience, right? So my idea is that we are building experiences in general uh, without discriminating. A lot of times, that is why the talk started with the fact that it's a blurry line and you're figuring it out. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.